Hello everyone, this is Tony from Wizard, and today we have a ton of news to share with you all. So let's get started. First and foremost, why did we start Wizard? We started Wizard because we strongly believe that we need to democratize UI design in order to truly empower product teams to build, to build the best possible products. Now, if you want to build great software products today, you have to focus on building great design as well. But building products is a team sport. You need to empower the entire team to, con to contribute to prototyping, ideation, um, wireframing, and so on. And so we strongly believe that we need to level the playing field in order to enable all the different stakeholders inside of a product team to meaningfully contribute to this process. We are super humble and excited to say that today 3.2 million people are trusting Wizard to empower uh, their workflow and accelerate their, their workflow. And in order to make this design prototyping workflow even faster and easier, you know, in June 2023 last year, we launched Auto Designer, which was our first Gen AI uh, text-based um, UI generator. Six months later, we launched Auto Designer 1.5. And because of this new, these two new product updates, today more than 80% of all UIs created in Wizard are designed with Gen AI. That's a ridiculous high proportion of UIs that are created with AI. Because of this, we've listened to all the feedback and we are extremely excited to say that today we are launching Auto Designer 2.0 in GA. Under the hood, Auto Designer 2.0 is powered by our own models, you know, the Wizard AI Core, the Wizard Vision Core, and then we supplement our own technology with OpenAI, Entropic, and Stability. And, and so that means that, you know, you have all these different AI models working under the hood, helping you co-create, helping you design, and really like helping the, helping the entire team uh, take, take IDs from zero to one and further along the process. Before we can actually play with Auto Designer 2.0 and I can show you all the crazy things it can do, let's just take a minute and watch the promo video. Who really wanted with me? I'm at the top, that's one, not two or three. It's real life, baby, no make believe. I just make it look easy like ABC. I'm on it 24, 7, 25, 8. I just pick up the pace and I violate. Eat it all up like a dinner plate I've been on a move like I'm running late Hell. I don't have a limit, I'm just getting started I am unstoppable, ask anybody I just get to it, no time for excuses I do what I do and I do it again I really do what I say Ain't got no time to be playing no games I just be making, I'm making a place Get money to it, I'm winning the race Pick up the pace Alright, now let's see the designer in action inside of a real project. The magic happened here in the auto designer chat interface. And I'll show you a lot of different things here, but the first one I want to focus on is modify selection. So inside of wizard, you can of course modify the components, the look and feel by hand. Um, but what modify selection enables you to do is to modify things through an AI chat instead. So now I click modify selection which will import these assets inside of the screen. And now I can say things like uh, replace the image for a picture of a dog riding in a plane, add options to log in with Facebook, Apple, and Google. And now I will get the results streamed directly here into the chat. I'll see what the AI is working on. And I, will, and I will be able to iterate on it through a prompt, drag and drop it in my canvas and modify it by hand, um, or just you know iterate it directly here uh, in the chat interface. So we get our cat picture in a plane, we get our login options with other providers, um, and now I can make more changes. For example, I could say, um, change the font to Roboto and add a secondary CTA for the user to create a new account. 
And again, we get the designer to just do the changes right there for us inside of the chat. So we went from this screen here to that interface here, and now we're getting um, the this new result here. So it didn't took long to include those um, three extra buttons, find the right image, uh, and 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 now we now we're done. I can use InDesign; it will replace the assets, and I will just need to extend the size of my viewport, and that's it. Now we can also um, create and generate entire new screens using other designer. So if I go into generate screen here, I could type exactly what I want. I want this to be a mobile screen. I'm working on a mobile app and I could say um, a screen for the user to search for flights. Um, there should be uh, ways to filter by city price and flight duration, there should also be a CTA to um, book the same as my last flight. And now you can do two different things. Either you can tell the designer, hey, I'm cool with doing creative exploration. You don't have to follow exactly what I've typed. Or in this case, where we've been really precise, you can say, I want this to be generated with high precision. And I will just click that um, in this case. Same as before, we get the results streamed right there to for us in the browser. Um, and so we should get, you know, search options. Um, we should be able to filter by price, city, flight dura duration. And we should also need to uh, get a CTA to book the same as our last flight. So we get a CTA, we get a different options. And again, we can we can just keep modifying it with AI. Um, for example, uh, translate everything to French and change the primary color to blue. Just as before, we get um, everything streamed to the browser. So we know we see what the AI is doing in real time. We don't have to wait until the end of the result of, of the result to know whether we were on the right path. So we ask it to generate to just translate all the text to French and then change the primary color to blue, which other designer is doing here. Great. So now I can actually just uh, import this as a new screen on my on, on my canvas. You know, I can I can I can modify absolutely everything. Um, the way I would, you know, if I had designed this, you know, by hand. So no surprises there. Um, all right, let me show you some other cool stuff. Another great thing you can do is instead of importing a screen from a prompt, instead of, sorry, generating a screen from a prompt, you can also import a screen from a screenshot or from a wireframe. Now, th these are features that you could you can already do today in Wizard, um, except that those have gotten a massive improvement with this release. So now I will import a screenshot um, of a UI, and I will turn this flat image into a fully editable design here in Wizard. This is a flat screenshot, um, and now we are importing it. And before we import it, actually, we can modify it with AI. So here I could say, replace um, all the content of the list to be travel destinations. So this was like, you know, um, recipe search screen, it seems. So now I can actually replace all the content using other designer for travel destinations. So you can really take any source of inspiration you have. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. It could be coming from, you know, the internet, screenshot of inspiration. It could be coming from Figma. You import it into Wizard, you tweak it with AI, and you basically like, you know, modify it to your liking.
and we are done. Now we can import it into the into our, our canvas and basically iterate further. What we could also do instead of importing a screenshot is import um, a wireframe. So one thing I also didn't show you is that you know have a chat history. So you can go back in time and change things. Um, you know, if you want to take work where you left it, um, and so on and so forth. So here what I will do, I will actually hijack the chat here and say, I don't want to upload this, uh, a screenshot. I want to actually upload a wireframe. Um, and my wireframe could be anything from, um, you know, something I've drawn on, on an iPad, something I've drawn on a whiteboard, something I've drawn on a piece of paper like this one. And I can import it into Wizard and make this static rough sketch a real editable interface. And one thing you notice here is that Auto Designer 2.0 is already applying the context of the project I'm already working on, which is a flight booking app. So now, you know, it's basically contextualized on my project and I can actually just directly um, drop it in there and make it editable. So let's wait, let's wait a few seconds and we go. Now we have turn our static wireframe into a full screen that I can, you know, edit and change right there in a the canvas. Um, another thing we haven't looked at is, of course, you have the ability to generate images. So for example, here, um, I can generate, you know, different pictures. Um, a picture of a dog riding a plane. And it will generate multiple options for you to pick from. Pretty cute dog, huh? Now I can take our dog. I'm not sure where I'm going to put that dog. Um, <laughs> I'll put it right here and I will cut this a little bit. That looks terrible, but at least you know what I'm, what I'm coming from and what you can do. Now, the last thing I didn't show you in the chat is the ability to generate themes. So here you can have the ability to generate a theme and you can do so from multiple sources. So you can type a description, for example, um, make this look like Airbnb polished and clean. So I can type a prompt and then get Auto Designer to generate a theme for me which I can apply right away, um, or I can actually um, go back and apply the theme from other sources. So for example, here I could say, I don't want to generate a theme from a description, I want to do so from uh, a screenshot. So I'll just take exactly the same screenshot I had before, which was this, you know, uh, yellow-ish theme, and apply it as a theme. Yes, generate a theme from this, and just like before with a prompt, now we are actually generating, we are applying the style from our screenshot to our project. Um, so, you know, you can really like take any kind of source of inspiration and, and use them as a way to just compose your project and, 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 and turn your ideas into reality really quickly. Now, obviously you still get all the good stuff from Wizard. You can move into low fidelity wireframe at any given point in time. Um, you can export components to code, React and CSS. And of course you can build interactive prototypes. So, you know, if I click on this button, I'll go to this screen and meaning that, you know, in preview, you can then play with your prototype right there in the browser um, and then, you know, test your flow. Now, one thing I didn't show you is that, of course, you can still create entire new project using Auto Designer. So no, we've seen how to create screens, we've seen how to create, to modify our selection with AI, but you can also generate project using AI. All right, so now we're gonna use Auto Designer to generate a full project using the project creator. So I can select whether I wanna create a mobile app uh, design, a tablet app, a desktop, a website, um, I'm going to pick mobile just because it's a bit faster uh, for the sake of a smooth demo. 
Um, so here I can just type out exactly what I want to build, uh, a mobile app to manage a, uh, a fleet of self-driving cars. I click continue, I can select how I want the style to be generated, whether I want to base it on a screenshot, the U URL of a known brand, whether I have a brand kit in wizard I can base it upon, or whether I want to just type it uh, as a text. Here I could say um, Silicon Valley uh, techie style, um, dark theme. And then I press generate my project. Now the big thing with Auto Designer 2.0, which is different from the current version that you might have uh, played with, is that we currently only generate an interactive an interactive prototype. With Auto Designer 2.0, we also generate um, design proposals here in the bottom of the screens, and these design proposals are UIs that the AI thought could fit the prompt, but didn't quite fit within the prototype flow um, that's being laid out on the top of the screen. So they're still being generated, and you can still use them um, as a way to just you know iterate on, on your design. Um, and, and the goal here is just to provide you as a user with a lot more options to pick from when creating a project uh, using Auto Designer. So now we have our um, Auto Fleet Manager self-driving car um, fleet management mobile app. Uh, so we have a few screens, and then we have those design proposals. If you toggle the Interact button here, you can see that there is already an interactive flow that has been built on top by Auto Designer, meaning that if you click Preview, you will actually be able to play with that mockup right there in the browser, uh, right after generated, generating it. Um, and of course, you can you can go ahead and just change absolutely everything you see on the screen, either through drag and drop. Um, you can supplement this with any type of components you want uh, throughout our you know library of, of template. Or of course, as we've seen before, you can use all the power of the Auto Designer 2.0 chat to basically extend your design further. All right, that's it, folks. That was a tour of all the new things coming up with Auto Designer 2.0, and we are super excited to see what you are going to create with it. Now, one more thing I want to share before leaving. We are extremely excited to announce that we are officially joining the great team at Miro. Uh, we are super psyched to see how we can empower more product teams to build the next big thing. So with that being said, happy creating, happy designing, and see you next time. Take care.